friends! Welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Caitlin. For those of you that are not new here, my face is happy that you are seeing it again. And today we are ranking every eyeshadow palette that I tried in 2021. I believe most of these palettes launched either at the very end of 2020. Maybe some of- there's at least one that didn't launch at the end of 2020, but I didn't get it until Christmas 2020. So there's like a couple, but most of these palettes were launched in 2021. So if you are interested in seeing me rank all of the palettes I tried in 2021, then you should go ahead and keep on watching. Before we get into the ranking, I feel like I should do a series of disclaimers. First disclaimer is I had a margarita that was very, very strong. Um, I was able to do my makeup well enough that tells me that I'm not that inebriated, but I'm feeling it. So that's, that's disclaimer number one. Disclaimer number two is I sorted these palettes. So I have a system. Let me take one of these notes so that I can show you. So I have a system. I put my overall feelings on the palette. And then I do kind of like an out of five ranking of like longevity, color, story, packaging, and cost. So then what I do is I take all of the palettes, like so for this first section of them, they're palettes that I don't like. Like my overall feelings on them are, I don't like it. Um, so then within that, I go, okay, based on these other rankings, like how should these shake out? Um, so that's kind of how I did it. So primarily the ranking is based on my personal preference for palettes. So if I put a palette that you love like really low, it's just because it's my personal preference. There's probably nothing wrong with the palette. In fact, other than like the bottom few palettes, there really isn't a quality issue with any of these palettes. So just wanted to get that out of the way. Third disclaimer, I've just decluttered some of these palettes already, so I don't have them to show you. I'm really sorry. I've already given them to friends or family, so we're just going to have to move right along. And I think that's it as far as the declaimers go. Declaimers? I think that's it as far as the disclaimers go. Anyways, make sure to like this video if you like this type of content and subscribe also if you like this type of content because I do a rankings video every month. My December palette ranking uh, should be coming sometime soon in January. Um, and yeah, so let's just go ahead and get on into the ranking. So first palette is one that I decluttered. It is the 80s Remix Dance Palette from BH Cosmetics. Nothing wrong with the formula. Formula was fine. My issue with the color story was that there was a lot of mattes and it was like a rainbow matte color story with like an odd choice on the shimmers I felt like. Like you had this really light shimmer that was nice, like it was like this icy white shimmer with like blue reflect, which I think worked nicely. But then you just had like a pink shimmer and this dark like black based blue shimmer. I don't know. I just felt like it was weird. Maybe for the 80s it made sense. I don't know. But anyways, I just didn't jive with that color story. I didn't want it. So that palette has been decluttered. Next up is the Caramel Brown Obsessions palette from Huda Beauty. Um, I mm, The formula on that palette actually was kind of an issue. There was the, like, what was supposed to be the, like, pretty topper shade that just didn't work at all. Well, zero pigmentation. It was, like, basically a useless shade. And when you only have nine shades, that's kind of a problem. Um, and then the deepest shade was another shimmer shade. Whereas I would have preferred that deeper shade to be a matte state, matte shade. So overall, didn't like the palette. It has been decluttered. Next up is the Serendipity the Artist and um, Unearthly Cosmetics, formerly Alien Cosmetics collab palette called the Poison Apple palette. I didn't like that formula on that palette at all. Um, there was a like a couple of the like duochromy shades were really nice. Um, the yellow matte was nice the two green shades were like okay and then the red shade was just like i didn't like that at all so again nine shades to only actually like three of them is kind of a problem so that's why i ended up getting rid of that palette um yeah there's another serendipity the artist collab 
that is higher up though and in, on a bunch of unearthly palettes that are higher up so don't let that be any signifier on the brand i actually really like the brand i just didn't like that palette next up is the pat mcgrath labs subversive palette so now from this point forward i do have all the palettes so it was just those three that i decluttered um this is it's like one of her little ones i actually got this for christmas i think this is launched like forever ago but i got this for christmas last year it is an all shimmer palette so as far as like my color story rating goes i don't love it and they're all kind of like the similar tone like you don't have a range of like really dark shimmers to really light shimmers like they're all basically like mid-tone shimmers um the packaging is okay i actually don't mind like the frosted like plastic it's not like super luxurious but this also isn't one of her more expensive palettes so i kind of get it um uh, so yeah i actually took this out of like my eyeshadow palette collection if that makes sense and put it actually with my like eyeliner collection because what i like to do and you can kind of see how i dug it out is I mix like I'll dig out some of the product and mix it with a mixing medium and I turn it into like a metallic liner and it is awesome for that so yeah like I like this palette as like an eyeliner palette like a lot but as an eyeshadow palette not my favorite and I should say that the quality on the Pat McGrath shadows actually isn't bad at all like that's not an issue on them <laughs> quality on this next palette however this is the naked wild west i also probably should have been counting this down for you guys shouldn't i have we're on let's see 63 so, so <laughs> 63, 63. we're on 59 <laughs> so 59 um is the naked wild west palette from urban decay i want to like this palette so much more than i do um i really like this color story i really like the packaging i don't like the formula and it and I want to, and I keep trying it, like hoping, just hoping that like something changes, but that's really my issue with that one. But I want to like it so bad. But I, and when I say the formula, it's just not as good as the formula of a lot of these other palettes. But like, if you're somebody who's using like, I don't know, if you're somebody who likes the Urban Decay eyeshadow formula, I feel like that's what you get with that palette. It's just not my favorite formula and i want them to change it so badly does that make sense so if you like make if you like urban decay and the naked palettes you probably like that wild west palette but i just don't okay so number 58 is the chocolate brown palette from huda chocolate brown obsessions palette from huda beauty there's nothing special about this palette that's why it's where it's at the color story isn't that unique again your deepest shade is that shimmery shade which I don't love, but this shimmer shade is beautiful. All the mattes actually work really nice on the palette. That's why this one ranked higher than its caramel brown counterpart. And that's why this one's still around and the caramel brown's not. I actually do like this palette if I'm doing somebody else's makeup and they want like a more neutral glam because I don't have a ton of that. Um, like I have stuff that goes like very warm or like kind of olivey toned neutrals or very cool toned neutrals. I don't have a ton of like brown neutrals <laughs> if that makes sense so anyways i do like this palette for that reason but it's like from my preference of color story it's just not my favorite next up is the toffee brown obsessions palette um i had less issues with the formula on this one i actually really like the topper shade on this one i like this yellowy brown color story yeah i, I think this is a nice palette it's um less issues than the caramel browns counter brown obsessions counterpart but like still not a great formula compared to my other palettes so that's why it is where it is um next up is another huda beauty obsessions palette this is the wild tiger obsessions this one's actually a, a lot more interesting this multi-chrome shade's pretty cool and i like how the yellow um shimmer pairs with like kind of the yellowy orange shades and then you have this like pink brown moment i just think this is a more unique color story and it's pretty fun um i just don't reach for this like i just don't gravitate towards this one that much so i didn't feel like i could put it higher because i love love a lot of the eyeshadow palettes in this that i tried this year and so this one's just kind of fell lower for that reason and now i lost count again you know i could just edit like the number in but i'm honestly really freaking lazy okay so now we're on 55 if i'm counting correctly so 55 is the huda beauty wild jaguar obsessions palette again 
really cool color story, especially for Huda. She doesn't really do this like smoky eye situation a lot. Um, I just don't really reach for this palette that often. And I don't know, I think also I'm kind of bitter because mine came totally shattered. I was able to repress it, but it's just like, I get nervous using it because I'm like, I don't want it to crumble and fall apart, but I don't know. I just, yeah. 54. This is the Give Me Glow Vivid Rose palette. I believe this launched in 2020, but I bought it at the very end of 2020 and then didn't try it until 2021. So this is what she looks like. I, I don't know why I don't reach for this palette. I love purple eyeshadow. I love pink and purple eyeshadow together. I love their shimmer formula and they have a great matte formula. I just don't reach for it. I don't know. I don't know if I need to remind myself that this exists and I need to reach for it more. Uh, I don't know. It's a, I have literally no idea why I don't use that palette. Okay, number 53 is the ColourPop Wild Child palette. I really like this palette and I know this is like a boring brown color story and I talked so much crap about some of the Huda Beauty ones but like this shimmer shade here is so pretty like I don't know there's just something about this palette and I think because it goes so deep with the matte even and you also have this dark deep shimmer to pair with it I just like it um and I actually almost decluttered this palette but then I changed my mind and here's why I changed my mind because I think this is a really good palette to travel with um because like if it breaks I'm you know it, it's not that much money same with like the Huda Beauty chocolate brown obsessions that's more of like a pinky purpley brown but I don't know do you guys travel with like your beloved palettes or do you travel with palettes that you're like it's okay and like I could kind of take it or leave it if it breaks you know what I mean <laughs> I don't okay Number 52 is the formerly Muse Beauty, now Kai, I don't know if they're Kai Love Beauty or just Kai Love, Kai Love. This is the Honoré palette. Um, this palette, I would say I don't need it and I would declutter it if it weren't for this stolen kiss, this shimmer shade. Beautiful. It is my, probably my favorite pink shimmer shade. Uh, that might be saying a lot. It's one of my favorite pink shimmer shades. It is stunning. And I really like the outer packaging that they do, like with the, you know, like inspiration from classical art. I just think it's so pretty. My issue is the packaging is so thick. Like if you see in, like look how deep, like we could make this flat and I would like it so much more. So that's my main issue with that one. It's just not like, the most unique or exciting or inspiring color story to me but it has really good shimmers in there and especially that pink one i love it number 51 is the dose of colors um donald and daisy duck collab palette this bronzer shade is actually really nice especially if you want to use it as a transition shade and actually the shade xoxo is a really nice blush too um and then classic also works as a great liner so this is actually a really good travel palette in my opinion because i can kind of get like i can get my bronzer and my blush and call it a day um and then also the two like the shimmer shades in here are really nice um so it's a really nice palette it's cute it's like handy especially if you were just needing something to like toss in your purse or in an emergency situation you like needed to do your makeup really fast i think it's a good palette to have like readily accessible um i keep losing count okay we're in the top 50. number 50 is the bh cosmetics 2000s remix dance palette now the reason i like this one so much more than the 80s remix palette is because this bottom neutral row it's so good it's so good and then with these purple and smoky tone shades like I just really like this color story and I am a child of the early 90s so I was in middle school for the early 2000s so like to have shade names like hot in here bootylicious single lady milkshake sexy back like I just love it <laughs> um yeah I I feel like I should have a con about this palette because it's in the number 50 out of 63 spot 
and really it just boils down to color story because actually the shadows in this palette have a really good quality and the cost of the BH Cosmetics palettes is insane for like what kind of quality you get so I really only have good things to say about this palette I just like and I and I like that color story it's just not my favorite color story um so anyways number 49 is the Huda Beauty Wild Chameleon Obsessions palette I just really like this color story in this like small nine pan situation and the formula on this one is really nice so I enjoy it it is only nine pans, so it's like, you can only do so much, but they're nice. They're nice. Yeah, I like it. So we're in this, I should clarify, since since the Honoré palette from Kylove, we're in the like, like category. So I like every palette from here on out. Um, everything that was either okay or don't like, we already went through. So... I, like I'm not gonna have a ton of negative stuff to say so I hope that's not why you guys are here because I'm not a, I'm not gonna really roast any of these palettes um yeah okay uh number 48 is the Huda Beauty Wild Python palette again really like this the only reason it's kind of out over its counterparts is color story but I really like this palette I like the quality of it I like the packaging I like the color story I just like it. Number 47 is the Triumph of Venus palette from Kylove. Kylove Beauty. Um, I should have looked that up before this. Uh, anyways, this is what the palette looks like. I think this is a super cool color story. And this is another palette where they're, it's like they really kill the lighter shimmer game because that seafoam shade, stunning. I also like Tide and Beam. And actually Storm's a really nice shimmer as well. Their shimmer shades are really, like, they're not glittery, but they're, like, wet metallic looking, if that makes sense. I really like them a lot. Okay, so next up, these are kind of, like, in order of my favorites, but they're the Sydney Grace and Tim Talia palettes. So we are at... So 46, 45, and 44. So in the... I should probably just talk about them all together, right? Um, so here's the, I don't think I have them in actual order. So here's the three of them, if you've never seen them before. So in the 46 spot, I have On the Horizon, and this is purely based on color story. You can actually see that I really dug into the shade here. Um, like this is one of my few, my palettes that actually looks used. I like this palette. Here's what I think happened with this palette. I bought too many palettes the month that I bought these three and so I just kind of rushed through like trying them out and then moved on like I didn't they didn't get the love that they deserved the other issue with these palettes is that they're so similar and I almost didn't buy them for this exact reason the three of them have such similar color stories that I was like mm, do I need all three and I really felt like I didn't need all three so but I couldn't decide which one so I wasn't going to buy them and then I thought screw it I'll just buy all three and so I did and now I'm like, I don't think I needed all three, um, but I don't know which one I would have picked because these shimmer shades are truly, truly beautiful and the mattes perform so nicely. Like, I don't know. I just didn't, they just didn't get the love that they deserve. This one is the Radiant Reflection palette and that, what is that shade? Our Starry Night and Gloss Over. If you want like an electric blue eyelid, you should get this palette. I don't know if it's even still available, but that's the only reason why it went up over the on the horizon is because you, like it's a truly electric blue and it is nice. <laughs> um, Quintessence is my favorite because of the shades Aurora, the Milky Way, and I think Borealis. Those are those are kind of my three favorite shades out of actually all the palettes. So like if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with this one, but. I also have shades that I really like in the other ones. Part of me has debated like if I just pulled my favorite shades from each of the palettes and put it into one and then just kept one, like would I use that more? But I don't know. I don't know. That's the hard part with those. And the number 42 spot is the formerly Alien Cosmetics, now Unearthly Cosmetics and Serendipity the Artist collab this is the strawberry milkshake collab first of all can we talk about that packaging adorable i love it um this palette's cute 
it's not my favorite i like like these shimmers and these mattes actually perform really well especially compared to the other collab that they did but alien Cos unearthly cosmetics can do way cooler shimmers than this so in my opinion it's just like okay but it could be better um number 40 Two is the Artist Couture Sp Supreme Nudes palette. This actually did launch last year, but I got it for Christmas and then tried it out in January of this year. I really like this palette. It's a solid neutral palette. As well. You have this like green and like gold shimmer that's really nice. Um, but if you just wanted to go like warm neutrals, the rest of the palette is perfect for that. It's a really nice palette. Yeah, I um the packaging's like super luxurious and sleek, and so I'm a big fan of that. It's just not like the most inspiring color story to me. So that's why it is placed where it is. So we did four through this. So 41 is the NARS Climax eyeshadow palette. The quality on this palette is actually amazing. I just don't reach for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, but like the, the eyeshadows in here are good. Um, the shimmery shades, they're kind of, I don't want to say stiff, but they're not like super creamy, but they like, adhere to your eye and it is metallic city on your eyelid and it's I mean it's really nice this is a good palette um I like it a lot just I don't reach for it because I have a million eyeshadow palettes oh my god I'm running out of breath and I'm getting thirsty what are we on 43 40. 40 we're in the top 40 now this is the Odin's Eye Erd palette and I like this palette. I don't love that the darkest green is a shimmer and I actually don't really like the shade at all. Every time I use it, I kind of hate how the look comes out, but I love the rest of the palette. This actually is the reason that I decluttered the child palette from ColourPop because I like this color story better. And in particular, what's the name of that shade? Time? This like white, it's like a multi-chrome. I swear if you pair just that shade and like these like two green mattes, you look like a woodland fairy. And who doesn't want to look like that? Um, I I talk about this all the time and I don't want to keep belaboring it. I don't like the texture on the Odin's Eye palettes. Like it's like this like sandpapery texture and it drives me batty, but that's my only complaint. Other than I don't like that dark green shimmer. <laughs> so I have two complaints, really. Um, Number 39 is the Melt Cosmetics Brunette Palette. If you're new here, I was going to say a bad word, but I complain about this every single time. My packaging ripped, which for how expensive these palettes are, is like really irritating. But the quality of this palette is nice. Like these mattes and these shimmers, they do not move. You put them on your eyelids, you come back in 12 hours, and you look the exact same. Your face makeup has maybe melted a little bit, but your eyes have not budged. Like this is good quality and this is the palette i like to reach for when i just need like a quick like i need to put something on my brow bone boom right there use that shade i need a quick like transition shade use cork like i just like almost keep this palette near my desk so that i'm like oh what do i want to do well grab it go like it's it's really good for that you might be going if that's your go-to palette why is it so low and the answer i have to that is I don't know. <laughs> I have bought too many eyeshadow palettes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do really like the palette. It's just like not the most inspiring color story on its own. I just pair it with a lot of other things. There we go. That's the answer to the question. So 38 is the Sigma Beauty Cinderella palette. This palette is so pretty. Again, the shimmer shades are so nice. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about this palette. Um, yeah, it's a really nice color story. I would like to use it more. 37, BH Cosmetics 90s Remix Dance Palette. This one was my favorite, probably because I was born in the 90s, but I love this palette. I love that there's like these, they're like almost like neon pastels and then the corresponding shimmer shade to go with them and then these neutrals these are actually my favorite kind of tone of neutrals they're not like super warm browns but they're also not very cool they're like slightly warm leaning i wouldn't call them cool tone browns but they're not like warm almost orange red browns um 
so yeah I, I really like this palette and I really like pulling this palette in when I need um a lighter colored shimmer or even a lighter colored matte like I I really like this palette and the, the price you can't beat it I think it's like $15 or am I getting confused with the beauty pay palettes I don't know I really love it I have lost count again 36. In the 36 spot, I have the Menagerie Cosmetics and Annette's Makeup Corner collab. This is the Serenity palette. I really like this palette, actually. Like, I really like this palette. My issue with this palette is that it stains like a... You know what I was going to say? It just stains. It stains so bad. And like, I can get behind like a little bit of staining on my eyelids. Like, for the most part, I have stained eyelids like almost every day of my life. And I just put more makeup on and it doesn't really matter. But I have to be intentional when I use this palette. Like, I can't use this palette and then the next day go and use the brunette palette. Because then like pink, hot pink or blue eyeshadow is going to be slightly coming through on those light brown neutrals. Like, I just have to be strategic. But I like this palette. I think it's really cool. I like the color story that she did. Um, she being Annette. I think the quality is really good if you can move past the staining. But the staining is like next level. And I don't even know if that palette's available anymore. So I won't keep talking about it. Um, I think it's around 35. This is the Viseart Paris Etoile palette. Um, not the cutest little thing like look at it in my hand it's so tiny and so cute I love this I okay so I had never tried Viseart I just felt like the brand didn't really speak to me until I saw that Violette Etendue palette and then I wanted it but I had the Naked Ultraviolet so I was like I'm not gonna buy the Viseart palette because they're very similar you'll see that Viseart palette <laughs> later in this ranking because I did end up buying it this year but anyways I I have fallen in love they I'm actually wearing one of their palettes on my eyes right now I'll point it out when we get to that ranking part of or when we get to that part of the ranking later I'm obsessed I'm about to buy every eyeshadow palette they've ever come out with like I <laughs> I really like their palettes this palette in particular is like great for a smoky eye and then it's just great it is so awesome i cannot wait to travel because i do want to bring this i know i'm risking it breaking but it's like so tiny and perfect for traveling i i just love it <laughs> it's so so awesome um okay what are we on 34 we are on 34 so we're not halfway if i could do math we're almost halfway <laughs> Um, this is the Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead collab. I, I actually really like this palette. I know it being in the 34 spot means like, should mean that I don't, but I, I do. I love this palette. I love the shade names. I love the concept. Um, again, the shimmery shades are so wet, metallic looking, kind of similar to the Kylov ones. Um, they're not like really like glitzy, sparkly, but they're just like wet, solid, opaque metallics. You know what I mean? They're really good. Um, I like the matte color story. It just doesn't go, I, you know, you know what, that's not true because these two shades are deeper. I think I want Predator to be slightly deeper than it actually is on the lid. I think that's really my only issue, but I, I mean, for a nine pan color story, like, this is mop. I'm running out of space on this freaking desk. All right. Okay. So what are we on? 33. I'm on the 33 palette. So this is the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. I feel like everyone loves this palette. And I want, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna challenge myself because I think part of the reason I haven't gotten behind this palette is I, beyond going like row by row, which I think is boring, like I don't know what to do with it, but I think what I'm gonna try and do is go column, right? Like those are interesting color stories. If you go, I should have done this one. For Christmas now that I look at it but I feel like I could go interesting color stories if I go column by column and I actually did do what I felt like was a pretty unique and interesting look with this palette I just haven't reached for it again for the reason that I'm telling you guys like I'm like I don't know I just don't know what to do with it but I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge myself because I love the Beauty Bay Book of Magic palette and so I, I actually like the Beauty Bay quality I just need to 
I just need to use that one more. 32. The Odin's Eye and Tina from the Fancy Face collab called the Hummingbird Palette. Odin's Eye? Their shimmers? That's like probably the best thing I discovered this year. Like, truly. Um, especially the shimmer fancy. This is the multi-chrome down in the corner. Beautiful. Hummingbird is also stunning. So is Tropics. Really, all the shimmers are really lovely. Um, this is just like, this palette I feel like launched late summer and I wasn't really feeling the summer vibes. But I think when it's time for like really bright eyeshadow again, you're going to see probably that palette jump up in some rankings because she just hasn't had her moment yet, but I know it's coming. Um, 31 is the Odin's Eye and Judy collab. This is the Red Dragon palette. Um, again, kind of similar thing. Mattes are great. Shimmers are stunning. Luna is the multi-chrome shade here. I actually really love using this palette for work when I don't want like crazy makeup but still want something a little bit interesting because, you know, we're an interesting girl around here. So yeah, I really like that. I kept those palettes in their, like, cardboard packaging so I don't have to touch the gritty packaging that they do. Anyways. Our, no our top 30. We're in the top 30. Wait. Oh. That means we just did 33. So then if we had done 32 palettes, there would be. So this is the top. This and the Red Dragon palette are in the top half. Am I stupid? <laughs> like, why can't I figure this out? Be careful. Be careful drinking margaritas, kids. Okay, anyways, number 30 is the Nomad Cosmetics America's Parks palette. Nomad. Nomad Shimmers especially the Narrows and um, oh the whole Rainforest and Big Bend and Acadia Lighthouse. All of the shimmers are great but those shimmers in particular are like pow amazing super glitzy and like reflective and just absolutely breathtakingly stunning. Um, the only reason this palette isn't like higher is because there's like I don't know what to do with this like purple shade up here. Like, I don't know what to blend that into. Um, I feel like I end up doing like a warm crease or a green crease and like, that's it. I just sort of like, I don't know what to do with that purple. And so it feel like limited with the palette, but I really like this palette otherwise. Next up is the number 29 palette. This is the Pat McGrath Mothership Mega. Oh, I always, no, Mothership Mega. I think I've always labeled these in my Instagram post, the Mega Mothership. But it's Mothership Mega. Noted. Celestial Od Odyssey palette. Um, so actually, this so the Subversive palette from Pat McGrath was my first Pat McGrath palette. This was my second. And then I just bought that Bridgerton collection. So I'm about to have a third. But anyways, this palette... First of all, can we talk about this packaging? Like... This is stunning. I know this is like cardboard on the outside, but the fact that she did this like luxurious, like I'm sure that's just plastic, but it just feels so luxurious. But anyways, the shimmers in this palette are so beautiful. They're like very glitzy, similar to the America's Parks shimmers that I was talking about, but some of them are just like really solid metallics as well. I don't love the MAC formula in here, but actually that I should take that back because I tried this with my Milk Hydro Grip Eye Primer, which I then used with my Vizier palette and one of my Give Me Glow palettes. And I don't like how the mattes perform with that eyeshadow primer, any of them. And then when I switched to a different eyeshadow primer and retested those palettes, they performed fine. So maybe I should give these mattes another try on a different eyeshadow base because that could be it, but I didn't really love the mattes. But the shimmers, amazing. I'm like, I love pairing matte palette with literally any matte shade that I like in any other palette. So even if the mattes don't perform well, I don't really care. I feel like I should have changed the order on these. Like America's Parks and Celestial Odyssey probably should have gone higher than the next three palettes now that I'm looking at them again, but whatever. So we're on 28. I do like this palette. I just feel like I like Celestial Odyssey and America's Parks better. But anyway, this is 
Fit the Van Gogh palette from Kylove, Kylove Beauty. I've talked about them already twice, so I feel like this is getting redundant, but they have really nice shimmer shades um, that are like truly metallic. And this is like a nice, fun, like grungy nine pan color story. And I'm into it. And um, I find the color story actually pretty inspiring. It does look like I have hard pan on Starlight. Let me see. Oh, actually, no. Just looks like I had it. Um. Um, so yeah, I oh, I actually want to reach for this palette soon because I, I do really like this color story. Um, same issue as with the other palette. I don't like how thick the packaging is. Oh um, god. This is a, another palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. This is the Lore palette. This is what I mean when I say they can do shimmer shades that are so nice. Oh, these shimmer shades are incredible the mattes all in this palette all work well but like they're, they play second fiddle too the shimmer shades these shimmer shades are absolutely breathtakingly beautiful i love them i don't know what number we're on 26 the mel cosmetics blueprint palette this is actually one of the first palettes that i bought this year um i never have the stack so bear that in mind even though there's only two shim two matte shades, I love this palette. First of all, the shade Skylight, I would die for this eyeshadow shade. It's one of my favorite shades in my collection. All of the shimmer shades are really nice in this palette, but Skylight in particular, she's good. Um, and what I really like about the matte shades in this palette is that you can kind of layer them so that you can create depth with those individual matte shades. So it's it's actually a really nice and versatile palette. I, I, I like it a lot. 25. This is the Danessa Myricks Beauty um, Lightwork Volume 3 Infinite Light Palette. This palette I use every single day, primarily for the highlighter shades. That's why it's a mess. But um, these, <laughs> these metallic shadows, I don't have, I'm not a single shadow person. So for those people who feel like this is just duplicating a lot of popular single shadows, um, I don't have those. So I can't relate. But I love these. I love them. My issue with some of them is that they disappear quickly. So there's like gel shades. I think it's Polaris spacesuit. I'm trying to look. I feel like it's definitely those two. It might be Martian or Solar Rain as well. Um, they just disappear so fast. If you layer them over like a matte shadow, they last a little bit longer but they don't last that long. So that's really my issue with this palette. That's not putting it up higher, but this palette is so incredibly stunning. I, I absolutely love it. 24 is the Nomad Cosmetics Haunted Europe palette. These palette is so beautiful. And if I could do just this like row of greens every day, I would. Um, <laughs> I just love this palette. I think the shimmer shades in this palette are nice. Um, they're not as like, you don't have as many of the like glitzy shades as you do in some of the other Nomad palettes. These are more like of the opaque metallic formula than like the glitzy sparkly shade. Although Bloody Mary's pretty sparkly. Um, the, the two green shimmers that I pointed out are pretty sparkly glitzy too. But overall, really like this palette, like the theming behind it. I like the color story of it. I actually don't have anything bad to say about it other than it's nice. <sighs> I'm so tired. Um, I think, was that 23? Or 24? That was 24. Yes, 24. Okay. 23 is the ColourPop Lush Life palette. Now, I will say part of what put this palette high is the fact that it is very inexpensive compared to the other palettes. Like the Danessa Myricks palette is $125. So when it's $125 and I have some issues with some shades, can I put it over a like, what is this probably $12 eyeshadow palette for 12 shades? No, I can't. Anyways, um, so this is what this palette looks like. I actually really like this color story. I like how bright and colorful it is. I think the quality of the shadows are really nice. Um, the packaging on this is really nice. And yeah, I mean, it's a really good ColourPop palette. 
I don't know if it's still available. I feel like ColourPop never makes the palettes that are actually good for very long. And then their palettes that suck stay around forever, but whatever. Um, number 22 is the Natasha Denona Circle Loco Palette. This palette is beautiful. I love the bright, vibrant colors. I love the shimmer shades. I love her inclusion of the cream to matte formula for Fun to Mime and Acrobat. Um, yeah. I, yeah, that's all I've got. It's a really nice palette. I think the only con is that Spiral and Canon are very similar. I don't think both were needed. Um, she probably could have done like something slightly more interesting if she's like switched out one of those oranges, but that feels really nitpicky when the formula on this palette is great and I like every look I've done with the palette, so yeah. Um, I'm out of breath. Okay, 22. 21 is the Laura Lee and Erin Weaver, Laura Lee Los Angeles and Erin Weaver collab, the Candy Skies palette. This palette, like, really captured my heart earlier this year. Um, although I'm just noticing that the shade's kind of, like, leaking. Do you guys see that? Where it's, like, turning pink and then there's, like, a little bit of, like, a grease stain. Oh, you can kind of see it on. Let me see. Oh, yeah, it's kind of happening on all of the shimmers. There's, like, a little bit of, like, a dark mark. Or like maybe some oil is leaking out of them or something's happening there. Hmm. Anyways, when I used this palette earlier this year, I haven't used this palette in a hot minute, but when I used this palette earlier this year, I really loved the quality of all of the shimmers. I felt inspired by the palette. I thought it was really cute. And yeah, I kind of want to use it more, especially now. What is the life on it? 12 months. So we're at kind of like the, I think I got it like July. So we're at like the five month mark. So I don't think anything is wrong with the shadows. Just that just some, sometimes happens with eyeshadows. They just sort of seep out. It's so gross, but I don't think it means anything. Um, This packaging is disgustingly dirty. I apologize. But this is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. And this is our number 20 spot. So we're in the top 20. I love this palette. The shade Yama. The shade Yama and Aura are two stunning shimmers. I love them. I really do. Um, I think Breath and Mantra are, again, two really awesome um, cream to matte formulas that she used. Calm's also a really nice one. I like that she did it. Um, and then I like that she had that brown mindful that was in that formula. And then you also have Zeal that's more of like a cool toned like khaki brown that's matte. So anyways, I like this palette. I like it a lot. Um, I think it's a cool color story. I like the quality of the shadows. I like the packaging. Yeah, I just like it. Uh, number 19 is the Mary Jane palette from Melt Cosmetics. I know a lot of people don't like this palette. I love it. I love the tones of these neutrals. Um, I like that. I think I read somewhere that they had mentioned that they wanted the shimmers to be more of like a refractive light situation so they are kind of textured on the lids but they're like very shiny i don't know i think it's really cool i like it a lot i um especially kali so those two shimmers i'm talking about are kali and mary jane the rest of the shimmers work kind of like normal shimmers but i just every time i use this palette i really like how my look turns out so i just have really positive warm fuzzy feelings towards the palette Number 18, this is the Kai Love Rococo palette. First of all, packaging, beautiful, other than it being thick. But the front packaging, love it. Um, here's what the inside of the palette looks like. I love these shimmer shades. I've said it multiple times, so I'm gonna keep saying it, but I also really like these mattes, and this palette actually pairs pretty nicely with that Candy Skies palette from Laura Lee Los Angeles. Um, I do wish we didn't have these two gold shimmers right here. They're a little, like, what if we took one out and did like a light green shimmer? That would have been stunning, but other than that one like really nitpicky complaint, I love that palette. Number 17 is the Lunar Beauty Moonspell Volume 2 palette. This is what the actual palette looks like. Um, I kept the box just because I think it's cool. But 
yeah, it's um, a purple, red, and pink color story. And I really like it. Um, I really like that color story. I like the shimmers in this palette a lot. The mattes in this palette are good. Not, I don't want to say not great. They're fine. They're nothing to like write home about, if that makes sense. Like they don't, they don't blend themselves to like a normal matte formula, which requires some finessing. Um, but the shimmer shades make up for it. And then the packaging and like the theming, it's awesome. I, I really like this palette. And the only reason I critique the mattes on this one is because Lunar Beauty has other palettes with mattes that I think are amazing. So like I got it like similar to some of the palettes like the unearthly ones where I was like I know they can do better it's with the Lunar Beauty formula I know it's been better I also understand like why it's maybe not as good Manny explained it in his video where he explained that they had to get a different lab and um, to keep costs down so I get it um which is why I'm like not knocking it down all the way does that make sense I don't know if that makes any sense anyways moving on um Number 16 is the Iceland, um, or the Nomad Cosmetics Iceland Fire and Ice Palette. Um, this pa outside packaging, so beautiful, and then it's, it's so it's icy on the outside, fire on the inside, I love it. Um, these shimmer shades, this is like Nomad at its best. The freaking, like this whole row of shimmer shades to die for. I also think Elves is one of my favorite shades, like from Nomad, period. I love this palette. I absolutely love this palette. It is awesome. So now we're in the top 15. Number 15, ABH Norvina Volume 5. I told you I love purple eyeshadows. Purple eyeshadows and neutral and like purple leaning neutral eyeshadows. Yeah, you got me. Um, these shimmery shades are awesome. C4 in particular. Is my favorite i think i said this in one of my like monthly ranking videos but e4 and c4 is a great two shadow like combo out the door done it's awesome um yeah i i really like this palette <laughs> um it's a really good one number 14 is the natasha denona retro palette <laughs> that color story be still my heart. I love it. I love it. You have these like warm, like, they're not like pink neutrals, but they're like almost like a clay color neutral. Does that make sense? And then like these purple berry leaning neutrals. It's just an awesome color story. And she killed it with her formula. Like, again, she has this shade this shade and she has four shades with the cream to matte formula which is or cream to powder formula which is my favorite formula of hers and then also her sh shimmers like if i wear every time i wear a natasha denona palette i get compliments on or ask the question like oh what are you like what eyeshadow are you wearing because her shimmer shades are that special that people are like oh my god what is that you know what i mean so yeah anyways all right we are so close to being done Number 13 is the Unearthly Cosmetics Don't Be Jelly palette. Now this is an all shimmer palette, so I do have to combine this palette with other palettes. This palette is so special. I actually hit pan in this shade right here. You can't see it because I pushed it so that I didn't hit pan. <laughs> um, but I love this palette. I think these shimmer shades are so special and wonderful and they make any eye look like a million times better um so even though it's an all shimmer palette and i have to combine it with other palettes i'm feeling it also um i've been combining it with this next palette and that's why they're both ring tired because they're a great combo um this is the gimme glow bad witch club palette this is actually the newest palette to my collection i like this palette my issue with it is that these three shimmer shades that the palette has aren't very light and i like like a lighter shimmer towards the inner corner like inner third of the eyelid so that's where i pull in the alien cosmetics palette but these mattes are incredible this color story is beautiful and the shimmer shades are really good they're just like it, again it ties to personal preference they're just like not quite light enough for me number 11 is the lois cosmetics meet me in the underworld palette i I'm obsessed with Greek mythology, so I really like the theming behind this palette. 
And then I just think this color story is lovely and I actually have every intention of combining this with my Venus XL2 palette, which is like a lighter pink green palette. I think those two palettes are going to pair so nicely together, but even if I didn't do that, I think this palette is so beautiful. I love that you can get like very warm like copper tones or a very berry look or like a grungy green look. I just think it's a really good color story. This shimmer formula I would say is also similar to the Kylove formula where it's like a wet opaque metallic without being super glitzy and like sparkly if that makes sense are you guys ready because we're about to hit the top 10 and listen let me just before we get into it let me just say this was extremely difficult i arranged an order of all of these yesterday and then I sat down to film today and I rearranged the order again. And then you saw during the filming, I was like, mm, I feel like I could have done a better order. So I really love like a lot of these palettes, uh, aside from the ones I told you I didn't really love, but the ones that I've told you I love, I really, really love. And so it was really hard to put an order on these. With that being said, the top 10, <laughs> I, I don't know if I put these things in the right spot. <laughs> I'm I'm really not sure. I um I did the best that I could though. So anyways, you could not go wrong with any palette since like I don't know. Let me see. Um basically since the Kylove like Honore palette. So what was that like number 50? Can't go wrong. <laughs> like I really don't think you could go wrong with any of these. Anyways, moving along. Um, the next palette I want to talk about, so in the number 10 spot is the Viseart Violette Etendue palette. I believe this did launch last year. But like I said, I didn't want to buy it. It was either last year or early this year. I can't remember. Anyway, I didn't want to buy it because I had the Urban Decay um, Naked Ultraviolet palette and I thought it's too similar of a color story. I'm not going to use both. Well, I don't really reach for the Urban Decay Naked Ultraviolet palette because I don't really like the formula. So I was like, I might as well try this one um and what made me think that was when i saw that it was on sale for black friday so so much better than that naked ultraviolet palette if you have the naked ultraviolet palette and you're like me and that's what's keeping you from buying this palette but you don't reach for it like i just say go for it this palette is awesome i love it it's it's so good um yeah <laughs> that's it that's all i bought and i love the size of the busy art palettes i know people kind of complain because they're expensive and you don't get a lot of product for how expensive they are but i don't ever pan eyeshadows like you guys see how many eyeshadow like these this is how much eyeshadow i've bought this year this year so i'm never gonna pan any eyeshadow palette so what do i care if it's a little bit smaller anyways number nine is the odin's eye and annette um the annette from annette's makeup corner collab the giant wolves palette um, I just think that the shade Eternal, Haiti or Hadi, and Skull, those three metallic shades, uh, I love them. Every time I use this palette, I use those three shades in some sort of combination. I, I've used the other shades, so I shouldn't say every time, but most of the time when I want to use this palette, it's to use, like, those three metallic shades. I'm absolutely obsessed with them, but I just think it's a good color story. Um, I really like it, but I just think those three shimmer shades are really, really special. So that is that on that. <laughs> Anyways, in the number, let me see, eight. in the number eight spot is actually the palette that I have on my eyes, which is the Viseart Bijou Wet Etendu palette. Um, I bought this at the same time as the Violette one um, on Black Friday. And first of all, this Art Deco packaging to die for um i i really like this palette i actually was hesitant on buying this one i thought i was only gonna buy the paris etoile one and the violet etendu but then i watched um i want to say kinky sweat so alicia archer i watched one of i think her video on this palette and i saw the look she did and i was like yeah i'm buying that um so yeah so i bought it and um yeah i am obsessed with this eye look that i have going on right now it's like a rainbow shimmer situation. I want to tell you guys why I love the Viseart formula really fast. Do you see these shimmer shades that I have in my lower lash line? I don't normally do shimmer shades in my lower lash line because I feel like it enhances texture. It makes me look older. 
Their shimmer shades are so like buttery soft and smooth. They blend out so easy, like so, so easy that you can kind of use them as matte shades. Like they're like, and they're not satin, like they're still, like if you look at my eyelids, they're still pretty metallic looking. Like I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, they have a really good formula and um, someday I'm probably gonna end up just buying every palette that they have ever launched. Um, in the number seven spot is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. This palette, these, the shimmer shades in this palette again are spectacular. Um, the matte color story is like not the most unique or inspired so that's what keeps this from being like number one but these shimmer shades it, like just skyrocketed this palette to the top because they are they are lovely. They are so special and stunning on the eye. I just can't that's all I have to say about it. Um, Number six is the Butte Bean and Shroud Cosmetics um, collab, the It's Freaking Bats palette. The shimmer shades in this palette are also beautiful. They're, I don't want to say they're similar to the Kai Love one because they have actually a little bit more dimension to them. Like Apparition is like purple with some like gold, Zero's purple with some like teal, but they're similar in the sense of like being super opaque and like wet looking on the eye. And I really like that. And then these mattes are so deep. And I just think this is a fun color story. Again, another creative color story for like a nine pan palette. So I think that's really cool. It's more inspiring. It gets me to, you know, step out of the box and go out of my comfort zone a little bit more. So I really like that. Top five. Are you ready? With the number five spot, we have Kaleidos Makeup Flower Punk Palette this color story i think it's nine i think it's nine shades three six nine yeah nine shades i have done looks that i would have never thought i would have done except until i had this palette like it has sparked so much creativity for being such a small palette their shimmer shades are like they're not so they're different from like a lot of the shimmer shades I've described where they're really opaque and wet and metallic looking. These are more like glitzy, toppery shades. They add a lot of sparkle. Um, they still give that wet appearance on the lid, but they're just like very glitzy, sparkly, multi-dimensional shimmers that are really, really beautiful. And I just love them. And I think the packaging is super cool. I've kept mine in the box because I thought the box was really cool. So yeah. Number four is another Kaleidos palette. This is the collab they did with Angelica Nikvist. This is the Club Nebula palette. Here's another palette where I have an issue with how thick it is, but anyways, moving on. Um, this is the color story on this palette. Absolutely beautiful. It again has that those like toppery, shimmery shades that can kind of transform depending on what colors you put next to it, what mattes you use. Yeah, it's nice. And then the mattes shades in this palette are like really, really good. Got nervous that we stopped recording at some point. Okay, number three. If, well, actually, if you guys watch any of my ranking videos, you know what the next three palettes are, right? Put them down below if you didn't already guess them at this point. Number three is the Color Trip palette from Cash Beauty. I just love this palette. I think having the water activated liners down here is super cool. I think the matte shades are nice. I love the shimmer shades that she included. I do like to pull in some shimmer shades from other palettes when I'm using this or just going for an all matte look has kind of been the vibe too, but I I love this palette. I think it's really cool. It's really inspiring to me. I I just like it. I like it a lot. That's why it's number three. Number two is the Blend Bunny Cosmetics Surge palette. Also, have you guys seen the Blend Bunny Cosmetics, the dollhouse palette she's about to release? I am buying that. Anyways, look at this palette. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. These neon shades are neon. They are neon. So bright. Um, the dark grungy mattes. Stunning. This palette, these mattes literally blend into themselves. I know people say that about a lot of eyeshadows, but like when they say that about this formula, they are not kidding. You just like tap over them slightly and they've blended out. Like it's so easy. I love it. I've said this before. 
The shimmer formula is not my favorite, but once you get them on the eye, they look beautiful. Is it a little bit of an effort to get them on the eye? Yes, but they look stunning once they're there. So it can't knock that palette anymore for me. Um, knock that palette down anymore for me. And I just, I just want to reach for that palette all the time. I want to use that palette to like blend with some other palettes. Like maybe I use that palette and mix in my Tim Tolly and Sydney Grace palettes since I really like the shimmers in those palettes. I don't know. Number one. Is the Melt Cosmetics Amore e Mariposas palette. And I know I'm probably going to come across as like such a melt stan putting the melt palette up as my top. But like this is a really good palette. Um, do I wish the pan sizes were a little bit bigger for the price of the palette? Absolutely. These are very tiny. And it is a, this is a $70 palette. So, but it's also heavy. So I kind of feel like you're getting what you're, you're paying for a little bit. And the packaging is incredible so i don't know anyways those are my thoughts but um i keep coming up with looks using this palette like i i see a look any look i see on instagram using this palette i'm like oh i want to recreate that and then it inspires another look from me personally to like come out of my own brain so then i do that and then it just leads to another look and then yeah and then i just keep reaching for this and reaching for it and reaching for it and reaching for it and it is it is so beautiful. I have no issues with this palette. I freaking love it. I feel like Melt does really well with their holiday collections. Like every year, I've never had a holiday collection. The Beetlejuice collection, I did love. I had some crit critiques of them though. They were good though. And then, so this one, like, I guess this one, I think is even better than those palettes is, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, we did it. 63 palettes. This video is going to be like two hours long. Anyways, did you guys, hope you guys enjoyed the palette. Did you guys use any of these or buy any of these palettes in the year 2021? Are you thinking about buying these palettes going into 2022? Let me know in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys about eyeshadow in there. Um, yeah, that's it for me. I, I think it's like 10 o'clock at this point and I want to go to bed. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.